We're into round two of the FIDE World Cup, this splendid knockout tournament. And I'm about to show you a wonderful checkmating attack from Adiban Baskaran. But before then, how would you assess this position? This is the round two game between Fabio, Fabiano Caruana playing white and Susanto Megaranto, who's a grandmaster from Indonesia. How would you assess this? Looks about level, right? No, nope, I'm afraid here, Black was forced to resign. Why? Because his COVID test came back positive in the middle of the game. FIDE officials informed him in, of, in the middle of the game, he tested positive. He was forced to resign the game and uh, go into isolation, of course, as was Fabiano Caruana, who went straight back to his hotel room, is now in quarantine. Uh, Caruana later tweeted, I hope Mr. Mogaranto is feeling well. He seemed to be completely fine during the game. So the way the match ended was a very unpleasant shock. I'll take a test tomorrow to determine if I was exposed to COVID and hopefully I can continue the event after that. So, well, that's shocking development from the uh, tournament. And, you know, I hope everyone concerned is, is OK. Um, simple question. Why weren't the why wasn't the COVID test results known before the game? It seems crazy to intervene in the middle of the game. Anyway, let's move on from that uh, because I want to show you this fantastic game from Adiban Baskaran. So he was playing uh, Norris Delgado Ramirez, and who's 20, 20 over rated over twenty six hundred, serious player. But watch what happens here. Adiban on splendid form. No B3 today. We've got a Nimzo Indian on the board. And F3. Now this leads to very, very sharp positions where you need to be very optimistic, I think, as, as uh, a player of the white pieces here. And I think that fits with uh, Adiban's chess character very well he's an optimist and well let's see some of his moves he's, he's basically not afraid to attack and i think that's what you need to have when you play this position there are many ways to play this c5 is a normal move here but c6 is a very interesting idea the basic idea is this that if e3 black is going to play b6 and after white exchanges you recapture with the c pawn and then you're ready to play the bishop into a6, exchange off these bishops, and then you play on the weakness of the c4 square here. Uh, it's a really interesting opening idea, but, well, Adiban thought for almost 10 minutes here and simply thought, right, I'm getting on with the job here. And he played e4, simply sacrificing a pawn. Really interesting idea. So after the exchange, if black takes on e4 then of course queen g4 and it reminds me of some variations of the french winner actually where white crashes through here but well black does have counterplay in the middle of the board it's an interesting position um but black didn't want to test that didn't take on e4 instead played e5 well that's a very nimzo like move trying to control white center and control these pawns Knight f3 and queen a5, hitting the pawn on c3. Bishop d2, knight takes e4. So, I mean, this is interesting. Um, in this case, black manages to eliminate one of those important bishops. But suddenly white has quite a lead in development. Pawn takes pawn. And now, if you lose your nerve here and play knight takes then black will be able to castle and should be okay. But Adiban just castled here with white. Such an interesting idea. So at the moment, how many pawns down is he? He's, yeah, two pawns down. And of course, it's possible to take another. Let's just see very quickly what happens if queen takes c3. Well, a check and knight g5 and i mean it reminds me of some positions in the king's gambit because 
you know, the F file is open, the E file is open, and basically Black's king is just going to be caught there, whether it goes to the king side or whether it stays in the middle. That is a crushing position already. So it's a tricky position for Black. Um, what else? What about Bishop E6? Well, again, Knight G5, just hammering on these squares is is deadly. Uh, for example, Knight here, you can play Rook takes. This is fun. Check. This didn't happen, by the way. But listen, just indulge me. I'm, I'm enjoying this position. Queen F4. You can see the queen is in Siberia. Yeah, I had to get it in. Well, you'll hear more of that in this game. And queen check. You can take here. Check. Well, that's queen e6 and that's game over. Um, so I think you can see the danger. So unsurprisingly, black decided to get the king out. But now, again, knight g5, just continuing in the same vein. Hitting the h7 pawn. Not to mention f7 as well. You know, that's dangerous enough. And now, well, there's all kinds of interesting things that can go on here. For example, if h6, then you can just take on f7. And, well, white wins this through sheer weight of numbers. Because look at black's pieces. They're on their starting blocks. The queen is way out of action. Let's just put it like that. And, and obviously... You know, this is absolutely decisive. So this is great stuff. So black played pawn to f5, shutting out the bishop. Okay, that's understandable. Now, I'm going to give you a little moment to reflect on this position. How would you continue the attack if you were playing with the white pieces? I really love this next move. This is the star move of the game. And I suspect that uh, Adivan's opponent uh, hadn't seen this a, a few moves back. Adivan thought for almost 10 minutes and played c5. What a beautiful move. I think it's easy to overlook a move like this because obviously, you know, white's concentrating on the king side. And it looks as though, well, with f5, that black has shut out white's pieces for the time being. But c5 is a wonderful idea opening up this diagonal towards the king. So, for example, if queen takes c5, check the queen can't interpose because of bishop c4 winning. And after this, well, white is in, basically. There's, there's going to be no defense here. For example, let me play out a few moves. Um, here, rookie one. Again, white is just winning because these pieces are in there. Um, and, and, and these are on their starting squares. Um, there, there is going to be no defence in this position. So queen takes, you can play, well, let me see. Is that one going to do the job? That one does the job, doesn't it? There we go. I don't think uh, black is going to get up from that one. So c5, what a beautiful move. Uh, black played king h8, queen e2. So just sliding over in this direction, notice that c5 move just means that queen is even more out of play on a5. Um, there's all kinds of delicious variations here. Black played knight d7 here, trying to bring a piece over. Let's just have a look at queen takes c5. That's kind of the obvious move to reconnect with the king side. But then queen h5 threatens mate. Okay, pawn takes pawn, check, fine. King goes in the corner, h6, stops the mate. And now let's just bring another piece over. Rook e1. Every single one of white's pieces contributing to the attack. Bishop d7, covers e8. Rook e6, there's a lovely move. If that's so threatening to take here. And if takes, I'll just continue this, it's really nice. You can see... White wins just by sheer weight of numbers. Queen g6 is a nice move. Rook f7. So threatening two checkmates. Queen g8. Rook takes. And, well, white should win that one. There's just a little difficulty with that pawn on c3. But actually, it's pretty well covered. 
so must be winning for white. Uh, this is great fun. So that's the position on the board. Queen e2 has just been played. Knight d7. And now Adiban crashed in with knight takes h7. Pawn takes pawn. Queen h5. Queen check. King here. King slides out of the way. Now very sensibly Adiban did not take the rook. He wants to keep as many pieces in the attack as possible. And this is just a winning move. So bishop e6 threatened, queen d5, knight g5 threatening a mate on h7, knight f6. Now, how do you finish off here? This one isn't too difficult, but it's really nice. So the game finished with queen h7 check. That was the final move of the game. Black resigned. If knight takes, check. Rook takes, and rook g8 mate. Fantastic stuff. And fittingly, these pieces are still on their starting blocks. Wonderful game from Adiban. We've seen him do that kind of thing before. Such a joyous player. Uh, do check out my other videos from uh, the FIDE World Cup. Um, there have been some cracking games already. Um, more to come over the next few weeks. I, I really hope that uh, they sort themselves out uh, as far as COVID goes because it, it is a splendid event and you know I wish everyone there all the best you know there's over 200 players and no doubt many organizers seconds so yeah just wishing everyone all the best thanks for watching